process and recording of transactions, double entry accounting, journal entries, posting, ledgers, and the trial balance were all tackled in the previous topics. After these four steps were done, the next step in the accounting cycle is the preparation of the adjusting entries. We understand that adjustments are often required to get to correct balances. That is why we have this step in the accounting cycle. The adjusting entries is basically a journal entry. The only difference is that, when compared to the second step of the accounting cycle, which is the journalizing transaction, the adjusting entries directly affect the journal entries that were made in the second step. That's not all. There might be transactions and events that remain unrecorded. Before doing the actual adjustments, you need to learn some of these concepts first. The time periodicity assumption presumes that an organization's business activities being a going concern entity can be divided into specific time periods. It can be months, quarterly, semi-annual, or even a year. The graph shows various accounting period, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. Most organizations use a year as their primary accounting period. Organizations that prepare interim financial statements cover a shorter period, a month, a quarter, or a six-month period. When reports are prepared annually, it is called annual financial statements. Take note that the annual reporting period does not always end on December 31. When a reporting period ends on December 31, the company adopts a calendar year. A fiscal year is adopted when the accounting period ends on any day except on the day of the calendar year. For example, a fiscal year may end on the 31st day of March. There are two methods or basis when recording transactions, cash basis and accrual basis. Let me first explain the definition of the two bases in recording transactions. In cash basis accounting, revenue is recorded when cash is received regardless when earned. And expense is recorded when cash is paid regardless when incurred. This means that the difference between cash receipts and cash payments is the basis of net income during the period. Simple, right? But how about the accrual basis of accounting? The accrual basis recognizes revenues when earned, regardless when cash is received, and expenses are recognized when incurred, regardless when paid. The accounting standards require the use of the accrual basis of accounting when recording transactions. To apply these concepts, here are some examples. In business, it is normal to extend credit to customers. Say you are a dentist. You rendered dental services to a customer worth $100 on December 10, 20x1. As per your usual business practice, you allowed your customer to pay next month. The customer paid you on January 15, 20x2. Under the cash basis accounting, this amount is not recorded in the books until you actually receive the money or check. Under the accrual method, the 5,000 pesos is recorded immediately as revenue when the service is made even if you receive the money a few days later. When we journalize the transaction, under cash basis, what should be the entry for the transaction? There is no journal entry on December 10, 20x1 because 
you have not received cash under this transaction. On the day of the payment by the customer, a journal entry debiting to cash and crediting to service revenue will be made. The journal entry is made because cash was actually received. As for the accrual accounting, on December 10, 20x1, a journal entry will be made. Debit to accounts receivable and credit to service revenue. The reason an entry is made because you have already rendered the service and the client is duty-bound to pay you for such service. Service is legally rendered and thus it is an accountable event requiring a journal entry. Remember that the accrual basis recognizes revenue when earned. Your business recognizes an income in the entry even though you haven't received the money yet. On January 15, 20x2, when payment is made by the customer, a debit to cash and a credit to accounts receivable is recorded. Take a look at this. On December 10, 20x1, the accounts receivable account was debited to record the amount owed by the customer. And on January 15, 20x2, it is then credited to record the amount paid. Therefore, the amount received is the payment for the accounts receivable last December 10, 20x1. And that is why the accounts receivable was credited to recognize that payment has been made and that the client no longer owes the business. Thus, when preparing the 20x1 calendar year financial statements, no revenue or receivable from the customer is recognized in year 20x1 under cash basis accounting, while under the accrual basis of accounting, the $100 revenue is properly recognized, and a receivable due from the customer is properly shown in the financial statements. This is the reason why the accrual basis of accounting is required by accounting standards, as it reflects the correct revenue earned and expenses incurred during a year. Let's look at another example, particularly when you buy supplies. On December 16, 20x1, you purchased dental supplies worth $200. Your longtime supplier allowed you to pay until January 25, 20x2, based on your supplier's usual credit terms. Under the cash basis of accounting, there is no entry on December 16, 20x1, since you haven't paid any cash. When payment is made on January 25, 20x2, an entry to record the payment of cash will be made. Debit supplies expense and credit cash. Under the accrual basis of accounting, the entry on December 16 will be a debit to supplies expense and a credit to accounts payable for 10,000 pesos. Even if you haven't paid any cash, you still have to record an entry because you have actually incurred an expense. Aside from recognizing the expense, you also acknowledge that you owe your supplier for the supplies not yet paid. Another entry is made on January 25, 20x2 when you paid the supplies. Debit accounts payable and credit cash. Accounts payable is debited to recognize that payment has been made and that you no longer owe your supplier. Notice that in both instances, there was no impact on the cash account on the day of the purchase. What is crucial was the recording of the revenue and expense as well as the recognition of a receivable or payable on the date of the accountable transaction.